tall team. Dude, yeah, you're, you're, you're going to have some tall ass kids. You're going to have some basketball players, especially over there in Milton District. Yes. Yeah. Milton just, has a great just, basketball team, too. Get into college free. I don't care if you make it in the NBA, just get into college. That's all. <laughs> so I, I thought we agreed that you were trying to get them into niche sports so they can be definite top of the field. No, we've already oh, discussed yeah. this. One kid gets to go to college, one kid gets to uh, go to rehab. All right, this is good stuff. Y'all are wasting it. Yeah, right, right, right. No, we're we're rolling right now. Just so all right, we'll know. keep it. You know well, what? I'm, keep it rolling. I don't give a damn. All right, welcome, all right. Welcome to. Well, hang welcome. on. Let me hit the. Let me at least pretend we're opening. Give the, the music, show. baby. Give the. All right, we might go. do a little of this at the beginning. Right. There it is. Yeah, a little backwards audio is what I need right now. My world is going backwards. Welcome to the Yeah, Come On Show, show 127. 127. Uh, we missed uh, a show last week. Uh, we'll get into that. It is the Yeah, Come On Show. I'm Southside Steve, dead center, at least in my squares. That's Brett Barney in the Atlanta Braves hat, our co-host, drinking orange juice. Or is it vodka, OJ? I don't know if he's doing screwdrivers. And then there's my co-co-host, that would be one Evan Brando. It is the Yeah, Come On Show. Let's get in it. I think we were in it already. There's crisis with uh, a little bit of the lawn care uh, that I have referred to my mother-in-law with my new guy not getting it done. Then there's a baby on my barber chair um, in a diaper that needs to be in the bath. And, uh, and, and my wife is, uh, is sleep deprived. And, and I'm supposed to go in this afternoon on Rock 100.5 and be funny. It's you not haven't even noticed uh, Brett's facial hair, which is really, I think, setting the, oh, show, the tone for the I'm show. Getting, I'm getting to it. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting to I'm born in the South. Uh, Brett went to Alabama, and he's showing it now. And uh, Evan, you're just a little hipster. But, yeah. Brett, you have turned into a Confederate. How's it going? <laughs> Roll Tide, baby. Or do I just say go dog? I go to Stone Mountain. <laughs> I actually played golf there on Friday. It was pretty fun. Um, I don't know. So this is really stupid. I have to go work this convention this weekend. And I guess I can say it because I'll already be there by the time this airs. I'll be out in Vegas working crime con with Nancy Grace. And I needed to shave and I was trimming my beard. And I don't know if you guys have ever had this situation, but like when you grow your facial hair out for two months, cause you can't find your razor head after your move that you decide to just say screw it and shave and it starts to die as you're shaving. So you're like, you don't want to get into the thick of it as it's dying because then it just pinches and catches. So yeah, I just got to this point and now I, I look terrible. You look like you belong on some kind of list. Oop. Yeah. And Steve just left us. So he'll be right back in who knows, Evan, how are you? Your hair looks hey, very quaffed today. Thank you. It's not clean. Um, uh, I, no, I did. I mean, while Steve's not here, I did want to talk about my weekend because I am a little tired from it. Um, I went to PAX East, which is a big like gaming convention thing. You know, they have a lot of like industry folks who are showing off their new games and people are drinking, and partying. And now, see, are these like uh, video games, uh, computer games, but board mostly, games? Mostly. Yeah, it's mostly video games, computer games. There's some board games. Um which there's that picture of me that I asked for a bag for my game and it just had like huge boobied anime women on it. I'm like, great. Now I get to walk around looking like Dude. a pervert. So I was thinking about that and Netflix just released that whole documentary on Abercrombie and Fitch. <laughs> and do you, do you remember? So I had to watch oh it. Oh my God. My wife worked at Abercrombie in high school. So like, obviously I got sucked into having to watch this thing. And the whole thing is about how they would only hire white people, but that's beside the point um true speaking of hiring white people here is Southside steve he has only now. hired white people there are <laughs> of the two i mean looking at us yes he has only hired white people but i was curious about this because remember back in the day i'm sure you dealt with this because we're pretty close in age when people when girls would like put the bags from abacarami and fitch like cutouts like make them their book covers or put them in their lockers with all the guys mm. that were just like shredded so I was thinking about that when I saw your big boobied women. My bag? Yes. That was, yeah, that was definitely a highlight of the the con. It was really fun. I'd never been to Boston before. It was, you know, got to see, play a bunch of new video games, meet some industry professionals. I actually ran into a woman from Pontoon Brewing who was like the head marketer there. 
Uh, she was there like demoing a game because basically it's a lot of people, like a lot of companies showing off new games, which is really cool. Uh, there's one called Arcade Mageddon that I'm pretty sure is going to be like the next Fortnite. That game is is going to be big. Keep uh, keep an eye out for that one. So what you uh, what what do you think of Boston though as a whole? Did you do anything outside of the convention? Yeah, I mean, so they do a really good job, I think, of incorporating the city into the convention. But uh, you know, we walked around a lot. We you know saw some sites. I paid. I overpaid for a lobster roll. Um, got you know. Was that a Quincy some- Market? Yeah, when uh, yes, it was. Uh, it was good. It was good. But um, I did the same damn thing. Overpaid for yeah. my lobster roll. Over like 30, 40 for bucks. Clam chowder. I have no idea why Steve, who only hires white guys, is coming in here four different times. He just wants to be part of the show. <laughs> this may be the greatest podcast we'll ever do. Yeah. And he's not going to get any of the jokes we're making. Oh, I can't he's even got hear no him. audio or anything. <laughs> It sucks. We have like some huge news to announce. This could be like the, <laughs> this is the worst show for this to happen. He just keeps, he's making hand motions for anybody that listens to the audio, which is majority of everybody who listens to this show. But if you are on the YouTube, you can see Steve. Steve you are muted. <laughs> there you go. You're unmuted now. Hey, wait. I'm leaving all of this in, by the way. Hey, Steve. Oh, bye, Steve. <laughs> he just left, but he's still here. Oh, I'm not, I'm not, yeah, I'm not cutting this shit. <laughs> So I want everyone to see the train wreck that we deal with most weeks. This Make sure you check funny. out the YouTube page. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's get back to, so was this your first time eating a lobster roll? Because that was my first time when I went to Boston for my brother's wedding. No, I'd and... had them before. It was better than the ones I'd had here, but not by that much. Not Ooh. by the cost difference. Yeah, well, okay. First off, and I've also, I've also like made lobster roll. Uh, I paid like 36 for it. Okay, yeah, that's about average, what I would think. And let's let Steve number four in. Steve number four. What's behind door number four? Is this just a complete train wreck of a show? Dude, this I'm is this is time. the most yeah, come on show of all time. This is epic. We do it live. <laughs> Fuck it, we do it live, Did baby. I ever tell the story on this, how I taught that to a bunch of people at your old stations? No, please tell. Please share. I mean, th- that's it, really. I just, I, I was, I was so, for, I got, when I was starting out in radio, I would occasionally go uh, screen phones for 106.7. And that's how um, we first met. Which is how we first met. Because you remember, were Evan number one at the station. That's right. There was a second one. But I was mostly working with Steve at that point. But it was just like, hey, I need a couple extra bucks here. Um and uh, I remember something went wrong, and I'm like, ah, fuck it, we do it live. And the some of the newsroom was like, ah, what is that? And I was like, what do you mean? What? This is a news station. What are you talking about? You, can y'all hear me? Fuck it, we do yeah, it we live. got no, you, we now. you now. Welcome. You can hear me in the microphone? Yes. No, it's, no, it's your computer. I, I okay, know. So, Why? Why? I don't know, but we're still rolling on all this. So, Evan just click the little microphone awesome in trip. the corner of your screen. Yeah, I need some advice on this, actually, on – uh, a highlight of my con. No, don't mute. Don't click the mute. There's a little arrow. <laughs> I know. I don't see. It. <laughs> I know. This is it's the best not my first time. I'm having issues. All I did was set down my drink. That's all I did. Did you pour the drink on the keyboard did or the, mixing no. board? <laughs> no, I didn't. It's just so <laughs> annoying, man. So annoying. Dude, I'm like, in and out of this show. We're like fucking 20 it's minutes. It's like, in. no, really? Why, why me? Why, why me? It's just going to be one of those days. I might as well call in sick to work. Yeah. It's not going to work well. It's just not. Nothing's <laughs> going to work. I can tell. I woke up. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Yeah, we got you. <laughs> so, hold on. I'm moving some stuff. Microphone HD, speakers HD, cable, virtual cable. Dude, I, I just started to tear up. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> yeah, this is great. I'm having a great time. So a lot of people won't know this, but this is pretty much every time before we start recording. Like every show. I, know, I, I, think, I, don't there's mess little, I think there's a little more. Wait, is that it? You get it? Wait, wait. No. no, no, it's fine. Dude, um, you're fine. You can just go off computer audio. As long as you can yeah. hear us, we're good. We can, I can barely hear you. That's what sucks. I'm going to try to leave one more time. All right. Okay. One more. Boston. Let's keep, let's hear about Evan's Boston trip some more. Oh, yeah, so did you, that. 
did you go to there's one place in boston i can't remember the name of it it's like the first sports bar ever in america i went to a one of the first bars called the bell in hand which was really fun i think okay that might be did it have like the glass cases on the left when you walk in it's like a tunnel shoot that yeah, opens up okay that's yeah. the one i've been to yeah that one that was a good time actually great story so we were all having fun at the bell in hand and one of my buddies really wants to go to the cheers bar all the the whole time that we've been like going in boston he's like we gotta go to cheers bar gotta go to cheers bar gotta go to cheers bar now did you go to cheers or cheers the the bar where it was filmed so there's two different oh there are so there's cheers oh this might have been the issue here there are cheers there's cheers the bar which is an imitation bar and it's towards quincy market then there's another bar where they actually filmed the show so there's actually uh, two different locations. I think we went to the one, like the touristy cheers, you know, that that's one. the one I went to. That's but, how I found out about making the mistake. But like, we were kind of drunk as you might imagine. Had some yeah. Come on. Yeah. Uh, and my buddy's like, God, we got to go. We're like right near it. We're like right near it. And I go, all right, this is like the one thing you want to do in Boston. So I rally the troops, all 10 of us. And I go, all right, we're going to cheers. It's, it's like right down the street, according to Will. So we're going to go to cheers. It was not right down the street. We are in for a 20, 30 minute walk. And we keep, we were like, where the fuck is this? That's and like a mile keep, and a half. dude. Yeah. It was like a mile and a half with like 10 drunk people. And we finally get there. My cousin, uh, cause I went with my cousin. Um, and he did like, he's all beat up. Cause he banged his shin on a, a fire hydrant. And he's just having a miserable time. Cause we're all like, you know, steadily losing the drunk. You know, the good buzz we had at Bell yes. Hand. And we finally get to cheers. And we, we like, it's like we reached the promised land. Uh, goodbye, Steve. <laughs> yes, Steve. <laughs> that's, that's why I'm trying so hard not to laugh. We reached the promised land of cheers. Everybody is exuberant. We see the cheers sign, you know, uh, the flag. You, we get down there, you, we pull in to little nook where it opens a little waiting area you hear yeah. the shitty cheers theme on repeat over a soft shitty speaker and it's closed yes so after all of that closed oh my Should god i call an engineer <laughs> <laughs> i think I'm i am your engineer. seriously to fix this crap <laughs> Oh, Steve, just crank up your computer speakers and we'll just keep going, baby. Yeah. I guess I don't have a choice. My God. All right, <laughs> uh, headset off. So, so where are we? Well, so, uh, Evan? I, yeah. Uh, so PAX was a really fun time. You know, um, I have nothing but good things to say about the actual experience. Playing all the games was fun. Meeting all the new industry folks was really, really cool. Highly recommend it to anyone interested in that kind of thing. However, uh, the parts of it that were, I, I don't know if I should say this because I would hope to be invited back someday, but uh, we were hanging out in our room and we get a knock on the door and like we're, you know, we're wrapping up for the evening, just having some drinks in the, the hotel. And these two guys are like, oh, shit, are y'all having a room party in here? And we go, uh, not really. It's just like the three of us. And one of our friends walks back. And he's like, oh, that guy's got a drink. Can we come in? We're like. Sure, I guess. No. Mistake number one. So these guys hang out and they all, they just talk about like what a big deal they are. They're like, oh yeah, I'm doing, signing millions of dollars worth of deals, million dollars worth of deals, million dollars worth of deals. And uh, all right, first yeah. off, what, what are they wearing? Uh, you know, this, the one guy looks like a, like an Atlanta hipster. He's got like a Henley and like jeans. And the other guy's got like bedazzled like crosses like, on a button well, down, like something Steve would wear. He's like, no, not like, what he's got I like would three wear. jackets on and like a gold chain and you know, um, but he, they're hanging out talking about what a big deal they are. Surprise. Not, not a big deal. Really, not really. We had, um, we had, uh, we had friend of the show, uh, look into them, a friend of the show, look into them. And I, I don't know if I should say his name, but it's, a, it's, a, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, we'll, we'll have him on the show sometime and he can talk about it. Um, regardless. Uh, but the weird part was towards the end of the night, I got offered a bump of cocaine. Did you uh, accept? Absolutely not. It was I probably swear. fentanyl. Yeah, I look, man, I'm not here to to do coke. 
I'm, I'm not here to judge people who do Coke. I'm sure it's great for some people, but I grew up a giant fan of Chris Farley and John Belushi and that's how they died. So I was always like, eh, I'm never going to do that. But when you're in a stranger's room and they say no to Coke, I, it's weird when you go ahead and just like do the Coke, right? Wait, so they continue to. They just, just kept doing Coke. They just did Coke in our room. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny. No, yeah, you definitely do the courtesy of, hey, I'm going to use your restroom real quick and just close the door and go do it on yeah, your own, right? Thank don't you, just right? don't just drop it right there on the table. He turned around to do it, which I guess he thought he was like, you know, I was like a baby with who had not developed object permanence yet. <laughs> did he say peekaboo when he turned yeah, he back did. I, like, I had no idea. He said, "Where's the coke guy?" Yeah. <laughs> so, so the two <laughs> coke brothers come into our room, do a bunch of coke. I don't believe that's part of the stand. So if that sounds fun, maybe, uh, you know, I wouldn't count on it happening at your PAX East experience. So here's my question. This, this sounds like a situation I've dealt with before where I've invited people to my place and it's like fucking linger. They just hang yeah. like, like you, yeah. you're like, you guys are like two hours past your welcome. You need to go home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was just like, it was funny. Cause like my, they were like talking about my friend, Sarah, who is like a, a vice chief. Uh, my friend Sarah is like a big, like, you know, she's a big streamer, Instagram person, cosplayer, that person. We were hanging with her and they were like, we, we want to make you a deal. We want to make you a deal. We want to make you a deal. But first, tell me how you're not racist. And she was like, what? What? That is a really good opening line, though, if you really want to test somebody. Yeah, I mean, prove to me you're not racist. It's not bad. Prove, but yeah, prove like, to me you're not racist. It. Usually you wait till three or four lines in. Should we, uh, is that like, can you hear verbal, is that verbal lines or cocaine lines? Yeah, I think it was, I look, I don't think these guys just started doing coke. They weren't like, you know, what sounds fun this evening. What if we cocaine? Just did cocaine? Those guys were definitely on cocaine <laughs> from the jump. <laughs> so, uh, PAX East, great time. Uh, you know, yeah. are we so, having a good show? We, so. we actually are. Hey, Steve, um, we do have a question for you before you can what? come back onto your own show. Prove to us that you're not racist. <laughs> I love all people. I hate a-holes. All right. Thank you. All right. You stole that from Bill Burr. I know. Uh, a-holes come on in all side. kinds of different colors. Some, some people of uh, all color, and when I say color, I mean white too, have chips on their shoulders because of their color. That brings you uh, into the a-hole uh, category for me. So uh, I think uh, people got to drop it. Uh, people got to let it go. Uh, there's too much guilt out there, and none of us are affected. This is generations and generations and generations ago. I think it's time to get along. There's so many advances, and every time somebody bitches about there's not this in the NFL or there's not this or that, I'm like, are you kidding me? I see all things in the NFL. I see nothing but mixed relations uh, and babies and stuff. I think we're in a good place. I think it's time to get over it all. And that's the black and white thing. Then you got the issues with uh, a lot of people moving in, uh, you know, like across the border right now. I don't even think that's a color issue. I think it's a citizenship issue. So I think a lot of things get confused. I think color is an easy out. It's an easy thing for somebody to scream. Uh, Did we just, uh, did, he just, did we just lose Steve? I think, Steve, we just lost your audio. But I Maybe, do think yeah. it's funny that we were, a, we, were, we were actually making jokes and Steve comes in and drops the most serious, like a really great pretty, response. Yeah, I think that answer would have appeased the Koch brothers. Yes, yeah, it's pronounced uh, Koch. Uh, no, these guys were on Coke, so they're the Koch. Oh, they it's are not the K-O-C-H. K -O -C -H. Yeah. Steve, if you missed the context, some guys in Coke, some guys doing Yeah, coke. I heard the Coke. I heard okay. the Coke thing. And uh, I grew up in an era where people were doing Coke in high school and at parties. I tried it. Uh, I did about three lines in 1987. Well, after, I mean, the year I should have actually been graduating college. Um, and it didn't do anything for me. I didn't like it. And uh, it was easy to refuse. And I never saw anybody make anybody feel creepy because they weren't doing it. They're going to do it because they love it. And if you say no, that gives them more. And they're okay with that. They're okay with you saying no. 
Uh, if they need your money to chip in, then they're probably not okay with you saying no. Oh, you know what? They didn't ask me to pitch. I don't know if they would have asked me to pitch in if I had said if I had agreed to do the coke. Well, Evan, you know yeah, how this works. Back in the day, it's like we're gonna get an eight ball. We're gonna get this. We're gonna get that. Everybody give a hundred dollars. I'm like, no, I'm not yeah. doing it. I don't want to wake up own. to a Venmo request for some, you know, like when you order pizza the night before and you're like, oh, I mm -hmm. kind of thought you offered to order it. So it works know. like this, Evan. You got to put in or put out. Yeah, that's right. Well, I put out. I didn't get, oh, well, hang on. That, Evan, yeah. you're a slut. <laughs> Shit. But yeah, PAX, fun time. Uh, so part of the reason we missed the show last week. Uh, oh. You're a drug addict, Evin. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of great cosplay too i don't know if anyone really cares about that but it was, it was a fun you don't need it man i mean for some people i think it was just like a be cool in or out drug but it, to be as expensive as it is uh and all it does is just it's the up and down it's the roller coaster you're up you're down you're up you're down mm -hmm. and all my friends that did it i was like you guys are idiots uh i can't find a reason other than sex to stay up till four in the morning mm-hmm Nothing bad. Nothing good happens after 2 a.m., as they say. And, no, uh, and I don't want to watch the sun come up, not sleep, and have to function. Yeah, see, those that, days are over, too. I, I remember bringing sunglasses into clubs and coming out and being like, oh, yeah, man, it's 7 a.m., driving home on a Sunday morning, seeing people go to church and feel like a heathen because I've got, like, sticky sweat on me from the night before. It's gross. Yeah, that's always the weird thing about these, these, like, con events that are, like, half industry event, half, like, thing is, like, you see, like, you know, you have to be up and chipper and, like, go meet people. But you also see people, like, just coming home. They're, like, bags under their eyes who clearly had too much to drink last night, you know. No, it's okay if you do that every once in a while. Oh, for yeah, whatever I did reasons, it once. But, man, you got sure. people that were doing that back in the day, and I guess still do, on a weekend, uh, every weekend. And it's like... I didn't even know uh, it was a there's, thing there's anymore. A type of, I call them the vampires. You know, it was tough being a, a bartender, too. You get off work at 3.30, and you're either wanting action or you want to go home and stop off at the Waffle House or the House of Pancakes, get something to eat and crash. And that's the guy I was. Rarely did I go, all right, let's go out. Only a girl could lure me out. If it was just the dudes, I'm like, screw y'all, man. I'm going home. Speaking of bartending, Steve, we have some exciting news. Yes? What? Wait, before that, Wait. I have one last question about this event before Steve okay, yeah. gets into this. Yeah, hit how me. Many, how many furries were at this event? Not none. A few. A few. I would say it was a not a furry-focused event, but furry-friendly. Furry friendly. Now, did you get into of the furry? Two. Now, did, Steve, do you know what furries are? Yeah, furries are the people that dress up in those little outfits. I don't see any reason to do that. Dude, I, funny story about this. We were uh, in office and we got sent a bunch of promo material for this new movie called The Bad Guys. And I was like, oh, this is like furry bait. Furries are going to love this movie. And like my coworkers around, our coworkers around my age were like, what is a furry? And like Steve was right there. And he was like, even I know what that is. And I was like, yeah, y'all are weird for not knowing what a furry is. No, you should know. I think I learned about furries in 1980 watching the movie The Shining. There was a furry between a, a guy's legs dressed up in a dog outfit. And uh, nice. yeah, so I think I knew about it before you guys were even born. So I know what huh. a furry is. But why in a million years do I want to dress up? I mean, I'm all about skin to win. I get it if you if you got one of those Velcro backs and they drop, you know, and, and then you've got a little front patch that drops. So let's get it. You're having sex as a raccoon and, and, and you're getting nailed by a dog in an outfit. Where's Wait, the fun in that? I don't know if it's only a sex thing. I mean, I think it definitely Oh, is. no, it's, right, it's Is it a personality thing, thing where you I, see yourself as this animal? If yeah. If you could be an animal, you would be this animal. So you like the characteristics of it and behave like that animal? I think it's, yeah, I think it's, I mean, I'm not saying it's not a sex thing. It definitely is, but I'm, I'm, I don't think it's exclusively a sex thing. Yeah, but here's the thing. So what's the difference between a furry who cuts a hole in the front of their costume to expose their genitalia? And by that, I mean their penis. Okay. Which is a medical Thanks. term that we can say on air. Thank you for. I clarifying. felt good about that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> What's the difference between that and a glory hole and a chevron? Uh, one's got a cat head. One looks like Sonic the Hedgehog. So you, yeah, you get to see the Pokemon you're going at it with, as opposed to just what's on the other side of this wall. You know what? I bet we could get a furry on the show. I would we love should. to I have like a to furry explore. on the show. But Furry Weekend Atlanta is like a big thing in Atlanta. Like we have a yeah. furry, a big furry meetup. I've never been, but my friends who own a food truck went. I love the disclaimer there. there. I've never been. Hey. I just know about it. I do the cons. I thought it I was like a my father. Thing. My father was a furry. 
No. He, the Boy <laughs> Scouts of America. Furry. Look He's at the boys. Furry. Well, if you look at Boy's life, my father made a Pedro costume, and Pedro was like the, the Boy's Life logo, the donkey, and he made a real life costume. We went to Falcons games, Braves games, and he'd be out there <laughs> waving for the Atlanta Area Council for Boy Scouts, and my dad was in the damn costume every oh, time. Oh, yeah. So, and then, and then a guy in my Boy Scout troop was the Atlanta Braves mascot. At one point in time, I can't think of his name, but he was really, he was green and wore a Braves jersey and kind of had like a little bit of a baseball face. Uh, and this would have been the 70s and 80s, and he was him. So I knew a lot of people in costumes. And then there's Six Flags, if you know people at Six Flags. That yeah. Do that. See, it's not exclusively a sex thing. Sometimes, um, and I uh, guess if you live in Orlando, you know a bunch of them because everybody's a furry down there. Mm -hmm. I think so, our definition yeah, is of it, furry is very liberal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, y'all don't know. So is it work related? Is it the lifestyle or is it sexual? I lean towards sexual. Do I think it's weird? Yeah. But I will tell you, people, their personalities. My dad was cool, but in, in the costume, he was way cool. He would do because, yeah. you know, nobody sees it's him. That's what it is. I think that's totally what it is. It's just like, oh yeah, I get it's just like people in their element, you know. Yeah. Well, let's take a quick break. We're really not going anywhere. Let's not even take a break. Let's just thank sponsors. Joebees.com. Call them at 877-356-32 or go to joebees.com for your bee pollen, baby. Oxygenfinancial.com with Ted Jenkin. He's ready to take your phone call now. Coming back on as a big sponsor on Rock 100.5. He's there for your money issues. Circle285.com. Circle285, that's for insurance. Whether it's home or your car, you're probably paying too much. You've probably been loyal to a big company for too long. Get a free quote. See what else is out there, especially if you have a trampoline like I do and kids coming over. You might need an umbrella. Circle285.com. And lastly, David Markwell, or Dr. David Markwell, I like to call him, Ridgeline Counseling. Uh, a lot of people out there having some issues. Maybe you're a furry and you don't want to be you. You'd rather be in a costume and you want to get talked out of your costume. Well, Dr. David Markwell can help with that. You can go in person. You can wear a mask or Dave will talk to you on Zoom. He's got two locations. The closest one to you guys is Marietta. But if you're in Blue Ridge, he'll talk to you there, too. Two locations, Ridgeline Counseling. Back to uh, Yeah, Come On 127. There are some big doings. I've joked that the surprise is coming. I can talk about it now. I'll give more details, bring more people on, and give more facts. But we're about to have a Yeah, Come On bourbon. Wait, yeah, come on. on. That's a big Yeah, Come On. It is an 80 proof sour mash bourbon whiskey. Legends is the uh, company that I've paired with uh, out of Cumming, Georgia. Legends has got a fabulous vodka. They've got a tequila. They've got different bourbons. They've got a 115, a 187 proof. This will be an 80 proof. Uh, this is great straight up. There's no burn. There's a smoky aftertaste. And if you mix it with Coca-Cola, it's dangerous. It tastes so damn good. I'm not even going to kid you. I've gone through five taste tests been working on this for six months. I went to them uh, because I liked Legends and I talked to them about it. Was there a possibility? We discussed it. We talked to a distributor and Anheuser-Busch has decided to distribute this across the United States. We'll start big here in Georgia. We'll be in liquor stores um, sooner than you think. Probably eight weeks, nine weeks, we'll be in liquor stores. Wow. And then we'll have a giant launch We'll do the Yeah, Come On show at their location, and we'll do the launch the second Saturday in July. I think that falls on July 9th. We will do a live show and launch uh, Yeah, Come On Bourbon, who will, believe it or not, be a sponsor of the Yeah, Come On show. Makes Hot sense. damn. So that's when we need to bring the furries in. No. Uh, <laughs> we get some mascots. That'd be fun. I yeah, will I say this. The crowd. Steve didn't yeah. mention the biggest thing about legends is the quantum purity. Isn't that what it I, is? And you don't get a hangover when you drink it. It's wild. You do not. My oh, wife drinks uh, legends what? vodka. I can show you the vodka right here. How does that work? 
They so, say if you go there, you have to give them $2 million to find out how, because that's how much the uh, technology costs them. There's two create. guys who know it and they can never be in the same. I think there's three. The same time. Yeah. They can't fly on the same planes, ride in yeah. the same car. They all want to go to lunch. They got to drive separately. <laughs> Eat at separate tables. Go different. But I got to tell you, the no hangover thing is legit. How does it work? Um, do we know? Is it, he even, I mean, huh? He even said as a test, and I may do this with the two of you. Uh, we'll do a show and then a next day show. Um, we'll get you guys <laughs> rides. AM show. <laughs> yeah. We'll do a live I'm going to get you plastered on Yeah, Come On Bourbon. Oh, plastered. Challenge accepted. <laughs> to the point where you know you're going to have a hangover. And then the next day we'll do a show and you won't have a hangover. All right. I will take those odds. He said that we want to get 10 guys. He said, get a group of your friends. Well, y'all are my buddies, hey. my friends, my family. So you're two of them. I'll find about five or six more guys that want to do it. I'll get you plastered. And like Brett said, you won't have a hangover. Okay. Huh. This is exciting. I and mean, by the way, don't drink yet. Come on bourbon with Pepsi. You'll just piss me off. I'm not allowed to have Pepsi. No. no. Okay. Got Coca-Cola. Got we live in Atlanta. It what about like with Coke? What about like Dr. Pepper? No. Or ginger ale. All right. This is I don't America. care if you use ginger ale or Dr. Pepper or any Mountain of those. Dew. But if you're going to go with a Coke, it has to be Coke, not Pepsi or RC Deal. Cola. Can't do RC Cola. Can't do what a big K Cola. Can't do. Uh, I love that you brought up Shasta RC. Cola. No. <laughs> yeah. Can't do the Shack Cola. I don't know what cheap ass cola, and I grew up. I've had some special K in my life. Trust me. You don't cola. do it. Coca Cola. Now I I drink it with Coke Zero. I don't care if you go Coke Diet Coke or Coke Zero, but drink Bob's it with cola. Coke and you'll love it. I could go get the bottle. Nobody's seen it. If you want to see it, can can we? Yeah, I'll show it. Well, Talk amongst yourselves. It's not like you haven't done it half the show. <laughs> Can I use a diet, right? <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, so right, I'm, I'm very excited for this. We have had Legends on as a sponsor kind of before we did like a little giveaway with them and people love it. It is a really good bourbon. It's a really good tequila. It's a Can really good a tab vodka. Cola? How's it mixed with a tab? a tab? Tab. No, dude. So I'm telling you, I'm a, you know, straight kind of guy uh-huh and i just like mine just neat and this stuff just pours good tastes good i'm a big fan we've had chris green on the show before he's awesome big soccer fan big bourbon guy and uh he basically does all of it i've gone up and hung out with him mm -hmm. he's a he's a great guy and i'm glad that steve's getting to do this and now I've burn up all our time talking together just pretty much just me talking a lot of brett show if you're a brett fan <laughs> this is a good show for you there we go yeah come on yeah then you get the side that's a little weird got the yc in my face a little yeah come on that's cool is it weird support. to have your face yeah and there i am on the back that's cool so have you yeah. ever had a liquor or a beer that's like the south side steve drink the official drink of Southside Steve. Yeah, I've had them. Um, um, you know, I'm a huge, I've been a Jack Daniels drinker since like the 10th grade. You know, that's what I got. I got drunk on wild turkey first and then switched to Jack and I've been loyal as hell to Jack. So for me, loving bourbon, um, that's my go-to, whether it's single barrel, gentleman or Jack Daniels. So I'm like, until you give me something else that I like better, that's what I'm going to drink. Now, if I'm someplace else, yeah, I can have uh, any, any other kind of bourbon. I, I'm not a, I'm not a prude. I'll try things like, you know, whether it's bullet or, you know, uh, or, or anything Baker, else. I mean, four roses, there's so many I could bring up, but what we decided to do was find the right mix. This is it. This is a tester bottle. This is all I have of the batch until we, uh, until we have it here in about four weeks. So uh, I, anybody that I come across, I give a sip, but this is it. Um, so I think you need to take a sip tester, right now. These were tester bottles. So is this like a so is this like an every it. like an everyday kind of whiskey or bourbon, or is it like definitely a, an know? everyday? Here's the good thing about it: for a purist, 
or somebody, because there's a lot of people out there that want the expensive stuff that are sippers and they want to drink it straight up, maybe on, with one large ice cube or on the rocks, how however, like it, yeah. and they're purists. So they don't want to mix it with Coke. And I get that. So that's where the price point is going to surprise you because depending on what the liquor store, the volume they're buying, this could be 24 to $30 oh, wow. is, is where it's going to be. Of that. So very affordable. I wanted the price point to be affordable. You know, because I'm a, I'm a, I grew up a blue collar, no collar guy, and I'm not going to put something out there that's just a country club bourbon yeah, that's got a high price drinking. point, or you got to buy a bottle for seventy five dollars. I'm not going to do that. Um, the other cool thing is that when you drink it, it's so smooth, there's no burn, and then you get that smoky aftertaste. I turned it on to some bourbon guys in my neighborhood that 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 drink, you know, Winkle or whatever that pay way too much. And one of my pappy buddies goes, this is incredible, straight up. He goes, but I think your price point's going to scare guys like me off because they're not going to think it's something you could drink straight. And so that's going to be the surprise that guys that really like a good bourbon are going to enjoy this, see it very, very affordable and like drinking it straight. But for a Jack yeah. and Coke drinker, but, which but is what probably a, who, what, what who a I'm after, this is rock star. What a douchey thing to say, because like I know, like I collect bourbon, and I can go downstairs, and I have bottles that are four hundred dollar bottles if I sell them on the secondary market, but their MSRP is like sixty five dollars. Here's the thing: you're never gonna find that damn bottle. That's like once in a blue moon. So if you can find a good bottle at that price point, why would you not drink that and exclusively drink that? Because I, you don't have to go to five different liquor stores and spend your weekend or your night or your lunch break trying to find something that you're probably not going to find going to the same places where you're just pissing the staff off going, where's your allocated? Where's your allocated? Where's your allocated? Just get something yeah. that you like. No, I agree. Um, I can't drink certain things. Like I do not enjoy drinking Jack Daniels straight up. I don't. It burns a little. It's not smooth to me. So I've always mixed it with Coke. Then I'll have my next one and I'll have a splash of Coke. By my third or fourth, yeah, I can drink it straight up, but I got to get revved up, get going. Uh, with this, you just pour it in a glass, start sipping, and it's rock star. It's that smooth. And I did not want anything with the burn, not putting my name on it, because I'm not a fan of that. But when you mix it with Coca-Cola, it's scary good. You get a little bit of that smoky taste, but it's like, it's like hunch punch or something. It's so damn smooth. People, watch yourself. It's scary how many you could have. Uh, it's, it just tastes fantastic with Coca-Cola, but straight up, you're exactly right. For the guy that wants to buy the expensive stuff, this is going to be readily available with a very low price, and you're going to love it. And you're not going to get a hangover. There's no way to get a hangover, my opinion, drinking this straight. Impossible. So when you taste test something like this, do you taste it? Is it just, do you do like, okay, this is what it tastes like? No, normal, you know, by itself. This is what it tastes like with an ice cube. This is what it tastes like with Coke. Is there a weird thing out there? They're like, all right, we got to see how this tastes with Mountain Dew. Just maybe it's good, you know? No, is you're exactly like right. Coke? There's When you get there, there's the glasses. So I had like five of these tester bottles, each with a little more, um, like as far as charcoal, for instance, which gives it its color and also its aftertaste. So we did like 30%, 40%, 50%. And we took it all from their 87 and we knocked it down to an 80 proof and that's when we started mixing it and we mixed it with uh you're exactly right you first drink it straight up you know and and and, and what people will notice and and you guys I don't know if you know this you drink something straight then you put ice in it changes the taste mm. to me it gets even better then you put that's it with called, coke that, that's called you're right we did all down. three with like five bottles so i'm having like 15 shots trying to figure it out yeah, yeah, and it's cleansing your palate yeah yeah I, I drove to work a couple times like <laughs> <laughs> oh man well that's exciting we'll have to do no you know, it is and you know it's um case testing uh the live event at the launch yeah it's 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 uh it's you know just looking at a bottle and seeing yeah come on on it you know and there's no secret. We do this podcast because to me, if you've ever said, yeah, come on, you might as well drink this. I also think you should wear it. It's a cool trade. It's a trademark saying, but it also to me is sell. It's, it's about celebrating. It's about, 
yeah, come on. You know, you did something good. Things are going your way. Or it's a lifestyle where you're all in no matter where you are. And it's for people who want to have a good time. Life's too short, you know. And if you work hard, you can play hard too. But this to me, for anybody that wants to have a drink at night just to relax, this is perfect. And like I said, it's not expensive. Uh, some of their stuff is expensive. Like there's other bottles. Oh yeah, that that one fifteen proof is I want to say about an eighty dollar bottle. Oh yeah, I was yeah. talking to my buddy about. Um... Oh wow, you have the single barrel too. That's a really yeah, nice single bottle. barrel. This is incredible, man. But you're talking, you know, you're you're talking one hundred and fifteen proof on some of these guys, and and you're right. You know, for me, Jack Jack Daniels, and I, and I, I'm only referencing because that's what I drank. Um, but it's a good Jack. Everybody says Jack and Coke, but it's an 80 proof. So people look at it like, all right, it's an 80 proof, man. Throw some Coke in it. It's good. You know, but somebody wants to drink this straight up. But the problem is now you can drink this straight up price points, different. It's smooth. It's a lower proof, but you can mix it with Coke too. But I think people are going to be shocked when they drink it straight going, damn, it tastes as good as, you know what I mean? A higher price mm -hmm. liquor. That's awesome. I was talking to a buddy of mine, like slyly, because I knew this was coming. But I, I, I was like, "What do you think of you know this, this, this distillery? You know, it's kind of near you." And he's he's a big bourbon and whiskey guy. You know, he's got like he literally has a closet full of them. And he's like, "Oh, they make great stuff." So I was like, "Okay, if this guy thinks it's good, then probably it's gonna rip." Well, it's it's yeah. not only do they make great stuff; they've done blind tastes like competitions, and they've won several awards against huge distilleries like mm. buffalo trace that you know that's your pappy that's your yeah, elmer yeah. t lee that's your eht i mean they're sazerac it goes on and on your thomas handies and as well as i want to say they went up against um elijah craig and a bunch of different other ones and they ended up winning which is wild that's awesome and they're right here local to atlanta yeah well there you have it but we'll talk more about it uh, mm -hmm. when we're going to do our launch, the first liquor stores that'll carry it. And, uh, I guess, Brett, uh, you had something interesting you wanted to ask us and close the yeah. show. With. I'm yes. so pumped for this. So I have this new game. I want to start finishing the show with, we're going to do this with guests. We're going to do this with you guys. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and pick three headlines every week. I, it's a game. I call it finish me off. So I'll start keep everyone in the know. Yeah, right? this is an educational, informative show as well. Uh, exactly. And I also want to see if you guys can accept my challenge of finishing me off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a headline. And as I'm reading the headline, I'm just going to stop. Once I stop, you guys have to guess the rest of the headline. Then I'll give you a quick little blurb on the story. You can react, whatever. We'll move on to the next one. I did four this week just because it's, you know, it's a trial and error kind of thing. So are you guys ready to finish me I'm off? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right. Wait, are we competing? Do you guys want to keep score? Do you guys want to go against each other? Sure, sure. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Tropicana creates cereal to be mixed specifically with. Uh, Tropicana. Is that right? Is that right? Tropicana. Evan, no milk necessary. Guess? I'm going to guess. Drink I'm going to go more. Eat your cereal with juice. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say just regular old oranges. Okay. Tropicana creates cereal to be mixed specifically with orange juice. Tropicana will release a cereal yeah. specifically intended to be mixed with orange juice instead of milk in honor orange of National juice. Orange Juice Day on May 4th. Dubbed the Tropicana Crunch, it's touted as the first ever breakfast cereal created to be paired with Tropicana Pure Premium. This is huh. not a Tropicana show, but I thought that was interesting. So that's, a, that's an easy one. Now we're going to yeah. get into it. You guys ready? Yep. Yeah. This is what it's going to be more like. Prime Minister's department takes down phallic. Oh, uh, phallic gonna... penis, phallic penis off statue in Woodruff Square. I'm going to say, yeah, it's a, I think it's going to be a mural. I think it's a mural that like, it's kind of like the Sistine Chapel, you know, where the, but, but way, way more nude. You know, except oh, it's so way of, like, more nude. Okay. So... <laughs> <laughs> All right. So he's going mural. I'm going statue. Yeah. 
Prime Minister's Department takes down phallic women's network logo after criticism. The federal government what? has removed a widely mocked logo for the Department of Prime Ministers and Cabinets Women's Network after it was criticized for a phallic appearance. The logo was a cursive purple W with a rectangular shape with a rounded end and appeared on the Department of Careers website. Oh, wow. Huh. It does Didn't look like a big coming. old penis. All right, let's keep rolling. Florida sheriff encourages homeowners to shoot. Uh, to uh, deer. Um, uh, so anyone on your property. Oh, Evan, you're very close. Florida Damn sheriff it. encourages homeowners to shoot burglars to save taxpayers money. <laughs> Santa Rosa County Sheriff Bob Johnson. Yeah, the jails are full. You get pretty much just open season. Hey, dude, look, take it into your own hands, man. <laughs> I think what it should be, it should be like how we have like deer season, rabbit season, bird season. There should be like, you know what, man? There's been a lot of petty theft, a lot of, you know, a lot of car break-ins. If you see someone breaking into a car, go for it from yeah, you know, yeah. November to January. I, I can see it <laughs> so now. It's a season, you get a license, yeah, then you make get some money. <laughs> hey, how about if you're the governor, you do a commercial, you're like, welcome to shoot a piece of crap month. Where you can shoot a piece of crap. And I'm talking about individuals, not crap. Shoot them. You're only allowed to kill three a month. I like it. Bag it, tag it. You see them breaking rules, pop a cap. Well, that's how I know. If I if I get shot, if you only have a, if you only have three and someone shoots me, I'm like, man, they must have really wanted to do that. They used one of their three on me. They're <laughs> one step away from the purge. Dude, hey, they gotta... defunded. They defunded my police department, so I'm funding you. Handle it. <laughs> We're saving so, taxpayer money. So you got to listen to this. Santa Rosa County Sheriff, this is in Florida, like I said, Bob Johnson. This is his direct quote. If somebody's breaking into your house, you're more than welcome to shoot them in Santa Rosa County. And we prefer that you do, <laughs> that you do actually do that. Now, this is, this next part is after somebody shot at a burglar that they arrested. Whoever that was, you're not in trouble. Come see us. We have a gun safety class we put on every other Saturday. If you take that, you'll shoot a lot better, and hopefully you'll save the taxpayers money. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Dude, so here's my last one. I, I want to keep it a little local. This is Columbus, Georgia. Longtime Columbus restaurant employee honored for grilling. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, longtime restaurant employee wanted for grilling. Honored. Honored. Long, longtime Columbus restaurant employee honored for grilling. Mm, uh, Gr grilling burger. Wi world's biggest uh, burger. Oh, oh, grilling. Yeah, I like it. Grilling. Uh, Wait, no, I got it. Hang on. Honored for wieners, grilling. Wieners, wieners. Most burgers of all time. Longtime Columbus restaurant employee honored for grilling a million steaks. Ah, Gail man, Dudley. Got it. A more than 20 year veteran of Longhorn Steakhouse on Macon Road is one of a handful of people in the company that have grilled more than 1 million steaks. Now she's being recognized as a grill master legend. Longhorn executives recently honored her with a surprise celebration at the restaurant. Co workers, family, and friends watched her as she was presented with a $5,000 check, a special nice. gold chef coat, and several yeah. other commemor commemorative items. That's well done. You know what? That's looking out for your people. That's doing it right. By the way, I fixed my technical problem. You'd be surprised when you unplug something and plug it back in and crap works. Um, can you hear me? Oh, we got you loud and clear. I feel like you just gave us the Comcast version. Now, is the TV box plugged into the wall? It is. I did. I got my Zeti 8. And what you need to do is unplug it and plug it back in. Have you shaken it yet? Yeah, I can see me online talking. That is the conversation. I'm like, yes, I did that. Don't even ask anybody when they call you, have you unplugged it or not? Everybody does that, except me this time. And now I'm working. Uh, I apologize for the uh, unprofessionalism of the show. I think that was fantastic that Longhorn did that. That woman, you talk about career move. She'll be there till the day she dies now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you talk about loyal. That's all you got to do. Businesses be loyal to the people that bust their ass for you. Do something nice, get you know, and then make somebody that's just under that bar want to raise their game to that bar. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm.
No, y'all aren't getting raises right now. I no, I was, sure. well, I was, I, I, was, I, was, I was, I was seeing if you were just going to present us with something. No, I don't have anything to give you. I will present you both with a yeah, come on uh, bourbon bottle. Uh, hey. Yes. And if we do anything really special, you'll get that. You'll be there that night. Um, so big things coming. Uh, training wheels on right now compared to how fast we're going to get. We're going to be a, uh, a race bike uh, in the next eight weeks as far as talking about it, getting uh, ramped up. But I, I, I back this. And that's the one thing that the owner of Legends told me, Michael, he's like, we're not doing this unless you're 100 percent in. You have to love this 100 percent. This has to be exactly the way you want it to taste otherwise you're not going to be all in so lots of tasting lots of tasting till we got it right we got it right and it's coming your way you were like darn yeah i know i know well you know got to taste a lot to get get to what you want but i will tell you it's been fun we do have a brand new uh thing coming our way uh brett and i'll give evan credit they've come up with something where we're going to talk about possibly the city you live in uh, and we're going to play a game. This is going to be fabulous. This is going to change podcast as a whole. We're going to change it and we're going to make you proud. We're going to involve you. And, uh, and who knows, you can even call in and tell us about your city, but first we'll present you with some, we start that next show. That'll be show 128. I just want to apologize to the two of you for being on a golf course intoxicated with my shirt off shooting a potato gun at bears best last week when I should have been here with you guys doing a show. Evan, I reached out to you and apologized. You were very courteous. You were kind. It happens. You, you appreciated fault, it. So. Brett, you did I didn't not. answer your call. <laughs> you <laughs> you were I, I, I sent him straight to voicemail, texted him. He texted me, he sent me a text and then I just didn't respond. I was like, I want to see what happens. Brett was mean as crap, made me feel horrible. So last yesterday I, I, I called you a dick. I'm like, oh, yeah, you better be there, dick, because you, you, you were dickish to me. But I was dickish to you first, so I apologize for my penile-like incident. It's all good. It was fun. I will ne no, it's not fun. And anytime, if I do that, you guys do the damn show. You're capable. But uh, you are my partners. I let you down. Uh, your money's coming. Um, you'll have it like in a day or two. I'll Venmo you guys. And, Why uh, we do it? I don't what money? Do it. Mostly IRS, it's fun don't time. listen. I yeah. no. Oh, by the way, be glad I'm been mowing you guys and I'm not writing checks and sending you 99s or 1295s. 1099s. You know yeah. what I'm talking about. I think I think yeah. you should make it just as, as like troublesome and hard to do as possible. <laughs> like, yeah, if you want, I mean, I'm paying you, but it's going to be a, a hell of a time to get. Oh, Evan, you'll get Venmoed. I'm going to drop uh, money Reddit off in check. pennies. <laughs> Brett gets pennies this month. You pay him in pesos. That's it. No, I love you guys. This was the Yeah, Come On Show 127. Uh, you wouldn't believe the crap these guys are sending me with their ideas and what's coming next week. Uh, we just wanted to kick the bourbon off. I apologize for the front of this show. I need not know what you're going to air. It was real. Let it be. <laughs> Let it be. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely chop that up, right, Brett? We'll make it look real professional. Brett, you, just try not to just try not to make me out on my family or anything. Just you know, be kind as you can be. Don't be dickish. <laughs> Special thanks to JoeBees.com, oxygenfinancial.com. Yeah, I just screwed that up. Circle 285 and Ridgeline Counseling. Thank you for watching on YouTube or listening wherever you get your podcast. It is the Yeah Come On Show. Can I get a Yeah Come On Boys? Yeah, yeah come on. Come on. Damn, that was good. Kid's good. The kid's very good.